Welcome, seekers of celestial wisdom, to the Lily Lectures, where the profound teachings of Christian astrology come alive. I am your guide, William Lilly, and today we shall go through the aphorisms and considerations for better judging horary questions, which will aid you to the mastery of the art of horary astrology. Let us begin. 1. Make sure the question is radical or suitable for judgment, which means that the Lord of the Ascendant and the current hour share the same nature or triplicity. 2. Do not be too confident in your judgment if the first few degrees or the later degrees of any sign are ascending. If only a few degrees are ascending, the matter is not yet ready for judgment. If the later degrees are ascending, it means the question has already passed and it's likely that the querent has been seeking advice from others or has lost hope in any success. In any case, the heavens advise against getting involved and trying to change or affect anything. 3. If Saturn or Mars are in the tenth house, and they are in a weak or unfortunate state, or if the south node is in that house, it will be difficult for the astrologer to gain credibility through that question. 4. Don't make assumptions or pass judgment based only on small actions or movements. Take the time to carefully think about what the person is trying to do or say before making any conclusions about their intentions. Avoid trivial questions or situations where the querent lacks the understanding of what they are asking. 5. Pay special attention to the strength and weakness of the moon. It is better for the Lord of the Ascendant to be unfortunate than the moon, as the moon represents the strength and virtue of all the other planets and their interplay. 6. Consider the condition of Saturn in every question. Saturn is naturally negative due to excessive cold, while Mars is negative due to excessive heat. However, in reality, neither of them is cold or dry, but symbolizes such qualities in their nature and effects. Therefore, in all questions, they suggest delay and obstacles unless the moon and they receive each other in the signification. 7. Take note of the condition of Jupiter and Venus, who are naturally fortunes and temperate. They never bring harm unless by accident. When they act as significators without reception, they put the matter forward but they perform best when they form favourable aspects and are in essential dignities. 8. Whenever the significators are benefic planets, have hope, but when the significators are malefic planets, be cautious and respond accordingly in your matters. 9. Pay attention to the overall condition of the moon. If the moon is void, of course, there is little hope of the desired outcome of the question being achieved. However, if the moon is in Cancer, Taurus, Sagittarius, or Pisces, there is less cause for concern since being void, of course, does not hinder its influence significantly. 10. Determine which planet the moon is separating from as it indicates what has already happened. If the separation is from a benefic planet, the outcome is positive. If from a malefic planet, the outcome is negative, according to the nature of the house, etc. Yin 11. The moon's application to a planet reveals the present condition of the matter being asked about. If the moon is applying to a good planet in a favorable house, it indicates strong prospects for the desired outcome. 12. When the moon applies to a planet in its fall, it signifies distress, trouble, and delays in the matter being asked about. 13. If a planet is retrograde or in its first station and acts as a significator in the question, it indicates discord, contradiction, and negative effects on the question. 14. Be cautious when malefic planets act as significators in any matter. If they predict something negative in the question, the consequences will be more severe. If they indicate something positive, it will be less significant than expected, requiring great effort and suffering to achieve. 15. A slow-moving planet 
prolongs the outcome of the question, making it difficult to achieve. The nature of the sign in which the planet is located greatly influences the judgment. 16. When malefic planets are significators of something negative, consider whether the benefic planets Jupiter or Venus cast any aspect on them. If they do, the previously intended negative outcome is diminished. Apply the same principle when the benefic planets are significators. 17. If the benefic planets signify something but are cadent, poorly placed in dignities, do not behold the ascendant or are retrograde, their influence is hindered and they will achieve little unless received. 18. Even with reception, if a malefic planet is a significator, its effects are limited. However, if the same situation occurs when the benefic planets are significators, the desired outcome will be accomplished. 19. A peregrine planet, one having no essential dignities where it is located, is extremely malevolent. If it is in essential dignities, its influence is less severe. In this case, it is like a noble soul that has its enemy in its grasp but chooses not to harm them. 20. In general, if Saturn or Mars are in their own house, exaltation, triplicity, or angular houses, and have significance in the question, they will bring about the desired outcome. 21. Do not rely too much on the assistance of a benefic planet unless it is in essential dignities. Only then will it fully accomplish matters, otherwise its effects will be limited. 22. If both benefit and malefic planets are either weak or equally poorly placed in a question, do not promise success in that matter. Delay, making the judgment until the heavens have a more favorable configuration. 23. When the significator of a question is combust or in opposition to the sun, it signifies nothing regarding the matter at hand. It cannot bring about any positive outcomes or achieve success. 24. If one malefic planet is joined with another and they signify something good, it will have no effect or result in anything. However, if they signify something negative, it is likely to manifest with more malice than expected. 25. When the Lord of the Ascendant is not in any of its own essential dignities, cadent or poorly placed, it indicates that the querent has little hope or prospects in their business or matter. 26. A planet within 12 degrees of the Sun is considered to be under its beams and lacks strength regardless of the sign it is in. However, when a planet is within 16 minutes of the Sun, it is said to be in Kazemi, indicating a significant addition of fortune and great strength. 27. Consider to which planet the significator commits its disposition and whether it is oriental or occidental. If the significator aligns with Saturn, Jupiter, or Mars, and they are oriental, the matter will be accomplished sooner. Conversely, if they are occidental, the matter will take longer. Apply the opposite principle to Venus and Mercury. 28. Observe whether the significator of the desired matter is in a fixed, cardinal, or mutable sign. Fixed signs indicate stability and the continuity of an already begun or to be begun matter. Mutable signs suggest a high probability of progress, but not its final conclusion. Cardinal signs indicate a sudden resolution or conclusion of the matter, one way or another. Use fixed signs when starting foundations of houses and towns, cardinal signs when undertaking short journeys, or mutable signs where a moderate outcome is desired. 29. The Lord of the Ascendant or the Moon in conjunction with the North or South Node brings harm to the question at hand. Look at the house they are in and derive further significations from that placement. 30. Check if the degree of the Ascendant or the placement of the significator corresponds to an upcoming eclipse. Even if the matter appears to be progressing well, it will unexpectedly suffer prejudice and will be difficult to conclude. 31. If the moon is obstructed in any question 
there will be a corresponding delay, obstacle, or hindrance in the matter being queried. It is rare for a question to have a favourable outcome when the moon is obstructed. For example, in a question about going to war, there is a risk to the querent's life. In a journey, there will be poor success. In matters of marriage, the relationship may end badly, and so on. 32. If the significator of the question or the moon is in a sign opposite to its own house, such as Mercury in Sagittarius or Pisces, it indicates that the querent has little hope in their demands. They may feel despair or indifference towards whether their desires can be fulfilled. 33. Pay close attention to the planet that impedes the significator of the matter being asked and the house it rules or is located in. From the nature or person of that house, derive the cause of obstruction. 34. The closer the significator is to an angle, the more positive outcomes can be expected. In succedent houses, the outcomes will be less significant, and in cadent houses, they will be even less pronounced. 35. When the moon is in conjunction with the sun, it is one of the most afflictive conditions for the moon. The ill aspects from the malefic planets also afflict the moon, but nothing is as powerful as its combustion. 36. If a malefic planet aspects the significator and both are peregrine, retrograde, cadent, or in signs contrary to their own nature, there is a possibility that, based on natural causes, they might create trouble in the matter at hand. 37. When significators in a matter are in conjunction and in a sign agreeable to their own nature, the desired outcome is achieved with ease and efficiency. Otherwise, it will be more challenging. 38. Pay special attention to any frustration or prohibition that occurs before the perfect aspect between significators. The planet causing the frustration describes the party or cause hindering the matter being requested. 39. Always consider the part of fortune. If it is well dignified in a specific house, the querent will gain benefits from people or matters related to that house. On the other hand, if it is ill-dignified, there will be damage or loss stemming from that area of life. 40. In questions of marriage, an unfortunate planet in the seventh house threatens disharmony in the marriage unless that same planet is a significator at the querent's birth. 41. If the lord of the eighth house is obstructed or unfortunate in the eighth house, the querent will experience a detriment due to the death of a woman or concerning debts owed to them by deceased individuals. 42. When Jupiter and Venus are well dignified in a specific house, expect benefits from people or matters signified by that house. For example, if they are in the third house, expect benefits from relatives. In the fourth house, benefits from the father or through land and so on. And lastly, 43. Beware of individuals and matters related to the house in which the south node is located. It is likely that the querent will suffer damage, scandal, or slander from people and matters signified by that house. As we conclude yet another voyage into the pages of Christian astrology, I trust that these aphorisms and considerations have enriched your understanding. Remember, dear listeners, the stars whisper to those who listen, and through horary astrology, we can decipher their messages. If these teachings have resonated with you, do consider subscribing, liking, and sharing, for as the stars unite, so does our journey of knowledge. Feel free to leave your questions and thoughts in the comments as our shared exploration continues. Until our stars align again, I am William Lilly, bidding you farewell, and may your paths be illuminated by the radiance of the celestial bodies.